What's going on? We're here with another episode of What Happens When You Live in the Hood. The girl with all of the tattoos. This happened when I was about a year and a half in the boarding house. I had become acclimated. I had become comfortable. I knew my way around. I knew the people in the neighborhood. It was copacetic. One thing about the hood, within a certain amount of square blocks, everybody knows who's doing what. Everyone is pretty much keyed in on who is who. You do this, you hang out here, you're dealing drugs. Everybody in the hood knows what's going on in the hood, which is kind of funny why the police have a valid complaint because when they say something went down, someone knows. It's true. Take that and put that in your wig for a minute. I was walking to the Martyr Station because I was going to my second job. I had worked out two jobs and the bus wasn't going to come in time for me to get to the job, so I was walking to the Martyr Station. And then um, this car pulls up beside me. It was a Caprice Classic, and the window slides down. You're like, you want a ride? And it's this chick. And you know, it was a hot day. I was, I already worked my first job, so I was like, sure. I didn't know who she was. I had never seen her before, but she knew who I was. Because we get in the car, right? And let me describe this chick. She had a neck tattoo. Look, she was uh, medium complexion, uh, very small waist. From what I can tell, big thighs, you know, as I was making my calculations as I got in the car, big thighs, big ass, liberty waist, and she had tattoos all over her body. She had them on her neck, she had them on her arms, she had them on her thighs, she had them on her calves. Later on, I found out she even had them on her feet. This was like 1998 when this was remarkable. This was kind of rare. You just wouldn't see someone like that with that many tattoos, especially the neck tattoo. She didn't have a face tattoo, but I'm surprised because she was just crazy. I think the girl had something like 42 tattoos. You know, she picks me up. She's a nice looking girl and we riding and she's like, how are you doing today? And I'm like, I'm all right. Thanks for the ride. I appreciate it. It's a hot day. I'm going to the second job. She said ain't nothing like a hard working man. And she took my hand and put it on her tattooed thigh. I was like, what? So, you know, and you know, she was kind of muscular, naturally muscular. So my hands on her tattoo thigh, we ride into the West End Martyr Station, little chit chat. She drops me off at the Martyr Station and uh, she grabs my hand. And then my hand is, she, she slides me a note with her phone number. She said, you should call me sometime. All right. So I go to work and I get off at like 12, 30 something. So I'm always this thirsty dude, right? So I called, I was like, hey, I'm off work. What are you doing? And she's like, you want me to come get you at the Marta station? I'm like, bet. So she comes and gets me at the Marta station. She got on a totally different outfit. She got on like a jumpsuit. And, and like, you know, people in the hood are very colorful. Colors, bold colors is the way that it goes. And this, this bright red sweatsuit and these uh, matching shoes. And, you know, it was like, what have you been doing? She said, I was at just at work. You know, we keep the air conditioning up high. And I come to find out that she owns a beauty salon. So we're, we're talking and stuff. And we go by the Chinese place and get some, you know, fried chicken, rice, and momo sauce. And we sitting there just talking and stuff. And, you know, very intelligent girl, you know, the, the tattoos just threw me. So she's like, so you've been hanging out with Lucy, what y'all got going on? Very blunt, very direct type chick. And I'm like, Lucy, she's my friend. You seem to know a lot about me. I don't know anything about you. Then she told me who she was. Her name was Gail. And they had the beauty salon at the end of Lucille in a house. 
And she said, I do hair, I do extensions, I do weave, I do, you know, she's like, I do it all. She's like, I always have my hand in some heads, right? So, you know, we, we just chopping up, having a nice little conversation. And uh, that's the night, you know, she takes me back to the boarding house because she knows where I live. Once again, I don't know nothing about her, but she knows where I live. She dropped me off. I guess she's like, okay, she dropped me off. And I didn't even tell her where I live. She just knew. So that was it, you know, gave her a little hug, went to the house. Then a few days later, you know, I meet her up with her again and we just start hanging out and everything. And it, it was just really intriguing who this girl was and who her friends were because she had an odds collection of friends. She had like a lot of old ladies really liked her cause she, you know, she would do old lady hair. She would hook them up for the low, low. And then she had a lot of these street girls, a lot of these like girls you see in the old school rap videos. Uh, there was a few of those chicks that were her clients. As I learned about her life, cause she was a workaholic. She was always working. Sometimes she worked seven days a week and she had bread. She had bread. It was funny because she actually did not live in the hood. She did her business in the hood. She spent a lot of time in the hood, but she lived off of Cascade in a really nice house. And, you know, we got to know each other and, you know, we, we, we were developing a little relationship and I'm just sitting here. Never in my life would I be with some girl with this many tattoos. It was kind of crazy because she looked hood. I mean, she, you know, put in the hood, she fit. There was no, you know, what doesn't belong. No, there, there was none of that. What doesn't belong in this. And then the more that I knew her, the more that I learned she was a sweet girl. She was a nice girl. And then after we started hanging out, we hanging out about two, three months. This is where the problems start in because we were back at the Chinese restaurant having some fried chicken, Momo rice and fried rice. We run into her ex boyfriend. Oh Lord. He had gold teeth and top and bottom gold teeth. He had the Cali prison look. Cause that's how they said he had the hat on. He had on these, uh, the pants, the jacket, like the stuff that the California boys were wearing. And he was with some other fellas and he had this weird way of speaking. Like, I, 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 and you know, we, we come in and he comes in with his boys. We at the table and he like, look at her and look at me and do this like charcoal black. He's so black. His eyes are black and he's looking at her and he looking at me and he looking at her. I, I, so you're going to get rid of me to get with this square. That's what you wanted. And she was like, Tyrone, it's over. We done. And do like, so you, 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 you fucking her now? You tapping that ass? I know that pussy good. I know it's good. I used to love that pussy. And I'm sitting there like, we in a restaurant. And he just going on and off. And he like, so you in the squares now? Because, you know, I was, I dressed very much unlike the hood people. I had on basic, you know, a lot of grays, uh, business casual. I wasn't very loud. I didn't dress as bright as everyone else did. So I stood out and he like looking at him. He like, you know, he looked like a J, something out of a J crew catalog. He looked like, you know, one of those boys that work on Peachtree street, you know, with one of them good government jobs and ha 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 ha. He laughed at his own jokes and stuff. He just looked at me. He's like, he bit down and he whispered in my ear, I'm going to get a back. Watch your back. And I'm sitting there like, is he crazy? And then it slowly dawns on me who he is. He's a local neighborhood drug dealer. He's one of the top drug dealers because I've saw him before because there used to be this 
club, this motorcycle club, which, you know, there was uh, people who were drug dealers. And I saw him over there once. And I, because he was with those, because there was just certain folks in the neighborhood I didn't mess with. I just knew not, I knew not to affiliate with them, just to leave them where they was. And he was one of them. After he left, so I was like, is he crazy? And he whispered in my ear, he going to get you back. He like, that's done. She's like, that's done. You know, I got tired of him and his ways. And I was like, what are his ways? He's like, you know, he, he sell drugs. And it's always something going on. You know, he would get arrested. Uh, one time he wanted to use my shop as a trap. I wouldn't let him. It was just always some stuff with him. And I, I just didn't want to lead that life. So as I got to know her, she was transitioning because she had she was getting older. You know, she had been single. She wanted to get married. She wanted to have some kids. So she had hit that age where women started to be reevaluating their choices, you know, kind of like Sierra and future. Now, you know, I was her Russell Wilson. That's what that's what she looked because, like I said, she made plenty of money. And the, the thing about people in the hood who make money, they, ha they, they stay in the hood. You know, like she lives off Cascade, not too far from the shop. But she was trying to nest. She was trying to fin finesse herself a dude to get married to. And, you know, and I liked her and everything and everything was lovely. We had a good time. You know, she was intelligent. But I wasn't going to marry some chick with 42 tattoos because as smart as she was, she was very in tune to hood culture. She was about that life. You know, she was about the things that happen in the hood because, you know, in the hood, there's just certain things that, that are done a certain way and everybody knows about it. I'll talk about that in some future videos. So I go, we, we finish up our little meal. We head back to her place, you know, about two o'clock in the morning. Bam, 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 Gail, Gail. It's drug boy. He drunk off his ass and he like beating on the door. Gail, I need you. Gail, I miss you. That that square, he can't do what I do for you. I don't even know why you're with him, right? Is he in there now? Tell him to get out my bed. And you know, he just out there and she goes and to the door and she doesn't open up the door because she had uh, security doors on the house. So she opened up the door, but she left the security door locked. And he like, let me in, let me in. He like, Tyrone, you need to go on away from here. We done. And he like, baby, baby, I got a good lick. So he, he pulling out all his money. He like, he had like a brick of money like I had a good week you know you know we could do good things together you know and he just sitting there talking and I'm listening to this and she talks to him for a little bit then she closes the door then we don't hear nothing and the next morning we go out fool had fell asleep in his car in her driveway and he was like good morning good morning mister mister square I told, I told you, you know, know like this like, ain't going to be easy, easy as you think it's going to be because I'm going to get my girl, girl back. back. I'm going to get her back. back. I, I need me. I'm going to get her back, back, right? right? So all of this foolishness is going on. Here I am working at Labor Pool. And, you know, like, like I said, Gail made, I don't even know. I would say Gail was probably doing 15 grand a month. And at the time, that was a lot of money, especially in the hood for what she was doing. We started after he started his shenanigans. It started to become quite evident because every time we went somewhere, Gail paid. It was always Gail. And then Gail said something one time. He's like, sometimes I feel like I'm the man in this relationship. And sometimes Gail would get into her hood ways. Like this, she would be like mean. And I was just like... I was so far gone, but I, I wasn't to the point where that just slid by me unnoticed. I was like, you ain't the man in this relationship. I am. And she's like, I don't know about that. You know, you look short on the money tip. 
this is one of the things about women in the hood. They will go, they will, they will go hard. They would go for the jugular because, you know, she knew I was working two jobs and everything. And this is one of the things she liked about me. But as Mr. Drug Dealer kept showing up with his bricks of money, you know, he used to spend money on her. They used to take these wild trips and stuff. And one day, you know, she was just in a bad mood, right? And she was just talking crazy to me. And I said, you know what? I'm about to go home. So I walked from Cascade back to Lucille. It was a little hike because uh, she was tripping. Hood culture is addictive. Hood culture is because, you know, she wanted to change, but dude kept coming around. You know, we pop up. We see him. You know, he'd be like, hey, how you doing? How my girl doing today? And one day I didn't hear from her. So I call her. No answer. No, she, you know, I paged her. She didn't hit me back. Nothing. And this goes on for like a week. And then I see her and the drug dealer hanging out together. And he like told you, man, I'm getting my girl back. She a good girl. Get my girl back. You heard me. You heard me. I, I, all I see was this dark face with these gold teeth, just chap, chap. And I'm sitting there like, and she won't even look at me. So I was like, that's how it is. And she said, it looks that way. Cause you know, I didn't really stack anything in her place. I would just spend the night, but I didn't have a toothbrush or nothing like that. So I leave them and I go back to my room. And then, you know, the dudes I'm with is like, Told you wasn't going to keep that girl. And there was this guy in the house called Moses. And we called him Moses because he was older than everybody. He was a mason. And Moses was just sitting in the common area. And he's like, man, you and her like fire and oil, oil and water. Y'all don't mix. He's like, I ain't surprised. She a hood rat. And you, you know, you know, everyone gets real funny when they would talk about how I was. Because I wasn't hood. Everyone knew that I was not hood. Everyone knew that I didn't belong in the hood. Because first time Moses met me, he said, you don't belong here. And Moses was like, hey, you know, you just got to take that, uh, you got to take that loss, man, you know, and get over it. Because, you know, I really liked the girl. And it was a hard crushing blow the way that I got dumped. I got straight dumped. You know, there was no discussion. There was no breakup conversation. It was just like, she went back to the drug dealer. And I was kind of messed up because I learned a very important lesson because I liked her and I liked being with her, but I never actually like loved this chick because there was just these, this, this, this hood thing. I couldn't get over this hood element to her personality. And you know, about six months later, I'm walking to the Mars station. And here comes the uh, Caprice Classic. And you're like, you want to ride? And I said, nah, I'll keep walking. That's how you got me the first time. I'm going to just keep walking. And she drove off. And we, we saw each other a few more times because her and the drug dealer ultimately broke up again. And, you know, she would kind of send like, you know, as they say, choosing signals. You know, she was trying to get back. And I was just like, I can't do this. I can't do this no more. And then Lucy and I would talk about it because Lucy, uh, Lucy actually got kind of offended. She's like, oh, you're going to do her, but you won't do me because, you know, I am cuter than she. And Lucy was cute girl. As someone said, dudes uh, are wifing up hoes in the comments every day. And this is true. Lucy looked so good because she never, to my knowledge, she never got ran down. She never got cracked out where she, you know, because there, there's this transformation that some people make when they get on crack. They transform from that person they were to this fiend. And the transformation is brutal. It affects their physical looks. It affects their health. They just are no nothing like what you think. And I got a story coming up about that because of a girl who used to work at Northside. 
and she got strung out on crack and she went through this transformation. So Lucy looked good where she could catch somebody because I mean, she's a pretty girl, like the girl in the thumbnail. That's kind of like what she looked like. And it, it's just interesting because Lucy and I had beef over this because she's like, oh, you with Gail. And Lucy knew who she was and what she did and everything. And like, it, it was just a weird thing. So for a minute, I had lost my friend because I was hanging in with Gail. I didn't spend no time with Lucy. It didn't make no sense, right? So after Gail and I broke up, I started looking for Lucy. I go around, old dude on the porch. She ain't here. You, your friend. Ha 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 ha. Your friend. Yeah. You want what everybody else be getting. I know you do. And it, it was just this weird, weird dichotomy at this point in my life that had broken up with my hood girlfriend and I was trying to mend fences with my crackhead friend. <laughs> it was just, I was in a place in life living in the hood and going through those experiences because I had missed my crackhead friend and I was getting over my hood girlfriend. But we never got back together again because, you know, she had made a few overtures. But I was like, I ain't falling for that because there was really no reason for us to break up. I mean, nothing, you know, just dude kept taking his shot and she let it go in. And I learned an important lesson. I don't care how good you treat a woman. She going to do what she going to do. If you're not it, you ain't it. It ain't it ain't predicated on how good you are it's predicated on how much she likes you and you know he was doing all kind of knucklehead stuff and she she got back with him he's a drug dealer he was getting arrested he was having gun fights because uh <clears throat> toward the end like i remember i was walking down the street and i saw him and his boys he's like what up square <laughs> and i was like what up drug dealer and then they didn't like that because he like, oh, you bold now, right? So he come rolling across the street with his boys in tow. He lift up his waistband and I'm like, really? You going to pull a gun on me with your punk ass? And I don't know where all this came from because. And he was just like, oh, you bout it, bout it, huh? You bout it, bout it, right? And dude got up in my face and I don't know where this came from, but I went Hulk mode. Bam! I punched him. I punched his boys and I picked up a brick and I smashed it across his head and I was like, and they were like, oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. And then the other drug dealer, the one that was like with Lucy, he come over there and he break it up. He like, oh, oh, oh. y'all need to be fighting, man. Y'all need to be fighting. We need, we need to be kin. We need to be brothers, right? So he got in it. And it was funny because I was getting the best of the three of them. I was just going crazy because in the hood, you know, I used to have my little workout regimen. I used to do push-ups, knee bends. I ain't lift weights, but I was pretty strong. And he like, all right, you got me this time. Next time, you ain't going to be so lucky. And him and his boys went off, right? And I'm just sitting there like, where did that come from? I think it was all of the disrespect that he was giving me when I was with Gail. It, it was just, cause I mean, he was just absolutely disrespectful, like coming over, just saying, I'm gonna get my girl back and all this other stuff. And he actually succeeded, but then she broke up with him again. And you know, I don't know what she was doing, but I learned a lot from that relationship. I learned that don't say what you never gonna do. Never in my life did I think I would get with a girl with 42 tattoos. I mean, like I said, you know, she would fit in today because she was a, a forerunner with that tattoo stuff. She's like, I'm addicted to tattoos. I just like them. I just like them. And she had them on her, all over her body, on her back, her shoulder, front thighs, side thighs. And like I said, she was a cute girl, but she was hood. She was so hood. Because there's this thing that happens to you when you live in the hood 
and you subscribe to hood culture, the hood code. Because like I said, you know, once I, I acclimated to the hood, because I never really converted to the hood. And this is why I didn't know everybody, but people would come up to me, oh, you Lucy's friend. They, they all knew that I was hanging out with Lucy. They all knew. And um, there was a house with these Jamaicans. I'm gonna do a, a story time about them because they were wild boys. Yeah, I had a hood girlfriend with 42 tattoos. Wouldn't do that today. <laughs> I wouldn't do that today. But at that time, hard dick don't have no conscience, man. Because, you know, when she took my hand and placed it on her thigh, my dick got hard. I was like, because, you know, she was really in shape. You know, she had a very nice body. And uh, we smashed probably the third time we met. And she was a monster in bed. And I know why old drug boy wanted her back, because she had that yippy dog. She put it on you. She was the type of chick to throw you on your back and mount you and be real nasty about it. So I understood what he was missing because uh, even one time he was being disrespectful. He's like, you like that? You like that pussy, don't you? I taught everything she know. <laughs> so that's it. That's the story of my hood girlfriend with 42 tattoos and how I got into it with a drug dealer. Crazy now that I think about it. So if you like these stories, be sure to subscribe. I'm creating a playlist with these stories. And if you want to avoid the hood, I have courses below to help you put money in your pocket so this never happens to you because it is a big ass change when this happens to you.